Today, for our Math Strategies video, we're going to be talking about classifying two-dimensional figures. We're going to be applying our understanding of lines and angles to help us classify figures based on both the length of the sides and the kind of angles that they make up. So before we get into classifying some of these two-dimensional figures, let's take a look at a little bit of vocabulary. So we know that acute angles are angles that are less than 90 degrees. So an acute triangle would be a triangle where all of the angles in the triangle, those are the three angles, are less than 90 degrees, okay? So we know an obtuse angle is greater than 90 degrees. So an obtuse triangle is where one angle in that triangle is greater than 90 degrees. And of course, a right angle is exactly 90 degrees, so a right triangle has one angle that's 90 degrees, okay? And you can use the corner of your paper um, to kind of help you see if some of these triangles are exactly that 90 degrees, okay? So another way to classify a triangle is based on the length of the sides and the angles, okay? So if we have three equal sides on a triangle, and that would also mean that the three angles are equal, we have an equilateral triangle, okay? If we have two sides and two angles that are the same, it's an isosceles triangle. And the last one is where there are no sides or no angles are equal, that is a scalene triangle. So let's take a look at this triangle here and let's see if we can classify it by both by its angles and by the length of its sides. So when I look at this triangle here, Okay, and this angle right here, I know that this angle is greater than 90 degrees. And again, I can use the corner of my paper if I need to, but I know that it is greater than 90 degrees, so it has an obtuse angle. Okay, so one way to describe this triangle is using the word obtuse. Okay, and then I see these two lines that come from my angle here, those are equal. Okay, and I can again use my paper or maybe even a pencil just to kind of guesstimate to see if those are equal. But since we know that that angle is obtuse and these two sides right here are the same, this angle is labeled as an obtuse isosceles triangle. Okay, so let's take a look at this triangle we have here. So this triangle, it looks to me that all three sides are equal and all three angles are less than 90 degrees. Okay, and again, I can use my paper to help me determine the, the, the angles and help me determine the length to see if it's the same. But one way to describe this one would be an acute equilateral triangle, okay? Because we have less than 90 degrees and then all the sides and angles are equal. Okay, so for our last triangle here, at first glance, I can see that I have a right angle right here. And again, I could use the corner of my paper to see that. Okay, so if I have one right angle, I know it's gonna be a right triangle. But another way to describe this is thinking about the sides. So since no sides are equal, means no angles are equal, so this triangle would be a right scaling triangle, okay? All right, so keep in mind our parallel and perpendicular lines, and now we're gonna use parallel and perpendicular lines to, um, to um, define a shape here. So parallel lines are lines that never touch, that are opposite of each other and then they never touch. Perpendicular lines are usually lines that cross but they form at that 90 degree angle. So we're gonna be thinking about that 90 degrees, okay, when we're looking at these shapes, okay? So let's take a look at these five shapes that we have here, okay? And now let's look at each one of them and see if they, which ones have at least one pair of parallel lines. Now remember, parallel lines are lines that never touch. So looking at figure A, I see, I see the top and the bottom of the figure are parallel lines, okay, as well as the sides. Those are parallel lines. So figure A actually has two sets or two pairs of parallel lines. Looking at B here, I see the opposite sides are parallel, and it looks like we have three pairs of parallel lines here in B. In C, we have a square, so we know that we have at least one pair in there. We actually have two in this one. And when I look at D, it is a triangle, so I know that all of these lines that make up the triangle are going to cross, so none of them would be parallel. And then looking at E, we have a rhombus here, and I know that the top and the bottom would be parallel, as well as the sides would be parallel. So figure A, B, C, and E all have at least one pair of parallel lines, okay? 
So now let's go back and look at these figures and see which ones have perpendicular lines. Okay, remember those perpendicular lines form those 90 degree angles. So if you need to, you could use the corner of your paper to determine if these shapes have that 90 degrees. Okay, so looking at A here, I know that we have some perpendicular lines here forming those 90 degree angles. When I look at B, all of these angles are obtuse. So we know that it can't be B. See, I have a square, which I know has those right angles. It has those lines that meet right at that 90 degrees. So I know that C would be one. And when I look at D, I see two acute angles here, but then on top right up here, I see what looks like 90 degrees. I see that like, that it makes that top, makes that 90 degree angle. So D would have those two perpendicular lines creating that 90 degrees. And then when I look at E, the opposite angles are obtuse or acute, so I know that E would not have perpendicular lines. And so we have figure A, C, and D that form those perpendicular lines. So as you begin classifying shapes, think about the angles and the lines, as well as the length of the sides that make up the shape.